in the recently concluded like last weekend's tournament summer tournament third summer tournament we had two players tied for first after six rounds based on butch they were tied total points were tied and only but i mean the first tie break better butch was tied second tie break butch made vaishnavi the champion so uh, let us go through both of their journey through the tournament i'm not going to show you all the 12 games i'm going to show you those important moments where both those players played some good chess in came and came on top i'm going to show you vaishnavi's as well as siddharth's six games i mean six games each not the full games just the important positions from each of them so when you look at these players who have won tournaments you can you can see how they play their chess and you can learn from what they do so that is the purpose of this video let's look at vaishnavi's journey first she was the first she was the champion her first game was against Vaish against vihan giridhar okay and i take you to this position vihan has just played rook a7 attacking b7 that turns out to be a slight mistake because now vaishnavi takes a vaishnavi takes a chance with with knight to c5 defending the pawn at the same time you can see that the viking is stuck on the first rank rook is already on the second so knight d3 is a threat knight b3 b3 is a threat vihan plays knight e7 check king moves knight goes back and then knight d3 knight takes pawn check vaishnavi is a pawn up king moves and now she takes another pawn knight takes b2 check now here comes a very important detail it's easy to get carried away here like many players would just get carried away and play go and out, go after all these pawns rook h3 rook f2 and all those moves but look what she does king c1 she does not forget that this b7 pawn is undefended it was a threat so she keeps the position intact after taking those two pawns she just comes back knight c5 it's like nothing happened the two pawns have vanished and the position is still good for black so you can see how well she played here vihan plays rook a5 rook b2 knight check king moves knight back rook takes pawn so three pawns up right now is vaishnavi knight check king moves knight moves back another pawn falls four pawns down you can see that the knight is just giving checks but it's wasting one tempo with each move and now the pass pawn just pushes forward and there is no hope again a check but again king moves down knight check king moves to d7 so this is another important point she defends these pawns with the king and then starts pushing b2 pawn rook a1 sorry rook a8 knight takes pawn so now five pawns up king c1 and then comes rook f2 threat is b2 and knight c3 and that's exactly what happens b2 check king b1 and knight c3 is actually checkmate so it was a good start to her tournament in the first round in the second round i take you to this position it was against advait 1058 now here vaishnavi has just played bishop to b5 what advait should have done here was pawn takes pawn or rook e8 something what he did was knight e7 which turns out to be a blunder can you spot what is the winning move for vaishnavi it's not so difficult just a basic tactic pawn takes pawn and it's a fork one of the two pieces are taken whichever one he saves the other one will go and that is how vaishnavi won a piece in the game and it was an easy conversion after that so that was a lucky break in the second round third round second round was very really easy for her third round i take you to this position it was a long game and it's an end game right now material is equal right but vaishnavi takes the chance with rook a7 a2 sorry white plays rook e8 and here comes a very important moment you can see this in her first game also she does not allow her opponent to take the position into his hands she keeps a control with king f8 not allowing rook e7 I mean you could allow rook e7 to take rook takes pawn rook e7 rook takes c2 and allow the rook to come into the second rank and take things but she plays king f8 because this pawn isn't going anywhere if you can force the white rook to come here i'll be too passive for the rook then the king can just march up and take all the pawns or get a great, great position he plays rook d1 going after counter play not going into passive defense with rook rook b1 which is a right approach but now she takes a pawn he takes a pawn she takes another pawn now she's pawn up rook d rook d8 check was a slight mistake because he should have played rook d7 and taken this pawn by the time he she would have played rook check rook here and the rook takes rook takes b3 
she would have two pawns. Check, king moves and now rook b8. King f6, rook takes pawn, pawn b5, king f1, rook c3, g4. Now rook takes h3. By the time white comes in and picks up this pawn, she clears up the whole queen side of uh, j and now he has, she has a pass pawn. Rook takes pawn check, king g5. Rook comes back, king takes. Rook takes, king f3. Now the position suddenly changes, it becomes aggressive. She changes into the mode of attack and now there's a threat of rook b1 checkmate. So j plays king d1, she plays rook b2. It's calm chess. Rook takes pawn, rook takes f2. Pawn f3, f6 sorry. Rook e2 check, king d1, rook f2, pawn c f7. So this can become like panic mode for many players, but not our champion. She just calmly plays king e3. The pawn is not going anywhere. Rook has got full control of that pawn. If the rook moves, this pawn falls. And the king is close enough to this pawn to start pushing this guy. He plays rook a7, h7, king d3. Again, a threat of checkmate. King d1, e1. Rook comes to f6 and defends the pawn. Rook g7, pawn starts pushing. Rook check, king moves to f7, I mean c2. Rook check, king moves to, oh, I thought the king should move to c1. But she moves it to b3. Rook takes pawn. Now there are two pass pawns. One is protected by the king and the other one will also be a problem. King moves and now rook, rook there and pawn push. King check, pawn push again, I suppose. No, rook check. King moves and now pawn push. And there is no way stop, to stop that pawn. He'll have to, J will have to give up the rook. Queens, king check, king moves, rook takes queen, rook takes back. Now it's an easy win after that. The pawn just promotes and then we have a checkmate in a few moves, the basic checkmate. So this was a tough game and she came on top of that. So this was after three rounds, she is on three out of three with many players. I think six players were on three out of three. Second day, fourth round, she is facing Jayant Verma. And this is where Jayant has just played Rook 8 And now she has a winning move. Vaishnavi has a winning move here. Pawn takes pawn check. King takes f7. Can you find the next move? Just equal, basically. She's just up by one pawn. That's not much. Black piece are also active. But then here there is a tactic. Knight g5. Basically, if king comes to f6, rook falls. So king has to go back and then another pawn goes. Two pawns down, knight again comes back, forcing the king back, and then the exchange of pieces happen. And we have three pawns up all of a sudden for Vaishnavi, and she went on to win this game. And then came the match of the tournament, fifth round. This is where she faced Sid Suryan, Siddharth, and here she faced some tough decisions, tough moments. And luckily for her, there was no time left for Siddharth to find the win. Actually, in this position, she plays rook a5, which is a slight mistake. Not because queen takes pawn. Because if queen takes pawn, queen takes pawn takes and the knight takes a4. That's equal. Because the pawn structure is bad now. And this rook has a file. Rook b7 is coming. After g3, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes back. Queen c2. She goes for counterplay. But it's a little too late. Rook, has, rook b7 comes. Queen takes pawn, rook takes a7. So that plays really well here. And now queen check, king moves. And then rook b8. This is where Siddharth had a win. And he missed it actually. He had rook f7. King takes and queen e6 check. King f8, knight g6. He missed it. And after a few moves, exchange of queens happened. Still the position is good for Siddharth. He's up by a pawn basically. Now, he plays perfectly. Just improving his pieces. Maneuvering his pieces. And the knight comes to d6. Another excellent position. This is where, okay, not here. Knight e8. Pawn takes, pawn, wait. There was a win here somewhere. Let me just check. Knight here. Yeah, here. This is where Siddharth had a win. He could have played pawn f5. King goes to h7. Pawn e6. He'll have two pa one pass pawn, two connected. Rook takes knight, the pawn pushes. And that's a win. He missed that. There was less time on his clock. He had 1 minute 37 seconds. So it's understandable. It's difficult to find such moves in so less time. 
still finds good moves, but here Vaishnavi offered a draw. And again, that's another thing you have to uh, know when your opponent is less on time and the situation is balanced, like he has much to lose and you have much to lose, then it's worth the shot to just offer a draw. So if she had more time, if she had a better position, she could have tried to win this. But Siddharth is the one trying to win and he has less time. So it's risky for both sides. So she offers a draw, she has a more risk of losing it because position is bad. And Siddharth accepts it because it's only 50 seconds. It can go either way. We didn't want that. And that's how their game ended in a draw. That means both of them were tied on 4.5 out of 5 after 5 rounds. And then came the 6th match. Vaishnavi versus Gajanin. And here Gajanin has just played Queen F6. Which means Vaishnavi gets a free point basically. In the last round of the tournament, Queen F6 blunder happens and knight takes Bishop takes Knight is a free piece. There's nothing that Gajanan could do now because he has just lost a full piece and he lost the game after a few minutes. So after six rounds, she was tied on five she was on five point five points. Let's now change our focus to Siddharth. How his tournament went. In the first round, he faced Shangar Anand. Alright? And here uh, Shangar has just played knight a4. Siddharth plays b3. And Shangar makes a mistake here, knight b2. Now this knight can never come back. That is a problem. He gets trapped by itself. So after queen c2, the knight just gets picked up. There's nothing that Shangar can do about it. He played some move and he picked up the Siddharth picked up the piece and won the game eventually. That was his first round. Second round, he faced Nandida. And here, Nandida made a small mistake. After knight a5 by Siddharth, Nandida played pawn f. Which is actually a small mistake because pawn takes pawn. And now bishop takes pawn is a big mistake. G5 comes. A fork. And one piece gets lost. E5 was played. Knight went back. Knight F5. So Nandida tried to wriggle out of that situation. But Siddharth handles it properly. He gives up the exchange. And takes the bishop. Bishop takes queen check. King moves. Bishop takes. Queen takes. So Siddharth basically has two knights for the rook, which is considered winning for him. Two pieces is better than a rook. It's even better than a rook and a pawn. Even though technically the same points. Queen takes c4. Now I'm going to show you how he converted this. Because after the exchange of queens, it's just a kind of equal position. But the two knights are now come becoming strong. And here comes the knight. Check. The other knight jumps in and then comes a blunder, rook c3 blunder, allowing knight to d3, a fork again. Losing the exchange. That means she would be up by a full piece after that and a pass point. That's how he won that game. The third round was against Rukwik. Here he faced some tough challenge from Rukwik. Because after pawn f6, pawn takes, rook takes, Rukwik plays bishop, f, bishop c3. Rook goes to g6. It looks good, but the problem is Rook has no space on the 6th rank. So Rukwik plays Knight attacking the Rook. Rook goes here, Bishop goes back, and then the Knight comes to g4. Rook has to drop back, because if you go to g6, then again Knight e5 comes. We become a draw, if you repeat thrice. Rook goes back, and then the pawn falls. Rook takes e6. So, here it's a very important moment for you to understand how a player fights back. Now, when you're down a pawn, if you play slow, calm chess, like normal chess, you will not be able to pose enough problems to your opponent. Which means, you have to make things a little complicated. Put some pressure on your opponent. That's when he fumbles. So, you can see how Siddharth did this here. Knight e5, getting the knight to a good square. Rook, attacking the rook. So, rook moved. Now, h5. Just going after, opening up the king, but still going after pieces. Knight goes to e5. Rook f5. Attacking the rook. Pawn c3. So the knight's attacked. The knight goes to e2. And that's how he won the game. So basically, the knight is hanging. So Rudwik's singing was, my knight's hanging, but if I attack this knight, when he takes, I'll take here. So it's equal. It's an exchange. But then, he oversaw this move. It was an oversight. Knight e2. And the knight saves itself. After the king moves, he just gets a free piece. And that is how Siddharth won the third round. So he came back from a bad position and in a matter of three moves, he, he was already a piece up. Let's go to the second day. Fourth round, he was, sorry. Fourth round, he actually got a walkover because of an unfortunate circumstance from his opponent. 
and that so after four rounds he was on four out of four. This is where he faced Vaishnavi. This game we already saw when we looked at Vaishnavi's games. Siddharth had rook f7 in this nice position, but he missed it. And the game ended in a draw after a few moves by agreement towards the end when both of them had less time. And that means the last game of the tournament for him was against Ahar. It was a tough challenge. It was a must win game to get second or first. If he lost, he would have been fourth or fifth or sixth or even something around that, that range. And here, he gets a very nice position out of the Sicilian. You can see that all black pieces are looking good. The rooks are jumping to d8 and e8. And here, the knight just jumps onto the d4 square. Embarrassing the queen, basically. Because of queen d3, which was played, c4 comes. And if queen takes queen, then queen takes bishop takes, there's knight c2. So the queen just goes back. And then the other pawn falls. Queen goes again back. And then c3. So this is basically stopping the pawn from going forward. He had a much easier win with rook ad8. But he didn't want to allow c3. c3 was never a problem. But he still didn't want to allow it. Bishop there. Knight goes back. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Bishop d2. Queen goes back. Pawn c3. Knight e6. And now queen f3. Which turns out to be a mistake. After rook d8. Ah, it's actually fine. After rook d8. Rook d1, knight c5. Now there is a problem because the bishop has to move. The bishop did not move. It got defended with a rook. Yes, but that allows e4 fork. So Siddharth wins another game by a fork. Of course, bishop can take. I mean, first of all, you have to move the queen. If the queen moves, I'll take the bishop. Right? So bishop takes bond, rook takes. Because if you take here directly, then rook takes rook will come. Sorry, bishop takes rook will come. If you take it directly, then this bishop takes rook. So rook takes rook first, rook takes back, and then you win the piece. And that is how he got an extra piece, and he converted without any difficulty in this position. You can see how easy he did that. Completely dominated the white pieces, took up both the pawns, and then it's just an easy position after that. He gave a knight back to get this position. It was not risky. It was practically a good choice. You can see what he did here. Knight e2 check. King moves and now he played queen c3. Giving up this knight. You know why? Because after rook takes knight, queen c1, he simplifies the position into a rook end game. And the rook end game with two connected pawns is an easy win. And that was smart by him. He just pushes the pawns step by step and wins the game. And queens. Picks up everything and then he just promotes again. And that's where a hand assigned. Sorry, it's checkmate actually. Yeah, it's made. So that is how the journey of both the players, top two players of the tournament went. You can see that their games are also not perfect. They make mistakes. They have their weak moments. Sometimes an opening goes wrong or they miss a tactic. It is chess. You can make mistakes. So when you face good players, if you take your chances, if you get an opportunity and you take it, then you can come on top. Everybody can win tournaments if you do well, if you practice well, if you prepare well and you play well on the day of the tournament. 